An Olympic athlete earns two medals at the Tokyo Games, one of the events that's making its debut in the Olympics just days ago. Joining me to talk about her latest accomplishment is silver and bronze medalist Katie Safiris. Katie, good morning to you. Good morning. Thanks for having me. You're joining us from your car in North Carolina <laughs> on the way to the beach. Are you, I assume you're open water swimming or something? I'm getting to see my family for the first time since uh, getting back. So I'll see my mom and my sisters, and I'm really excited, and my nephews and brother-in-law. So. Well, how cool is it that you'd spend some time talking to us? Katie, uh, first of all, I know you have a background in swimming and in running, do you not? So was it the biking that you had to learn? Was that your weak link, getting into uh, endurance sports? Yeah, the biking was the part I was the most uncomfortable with. I was strong, but I really didn't have very good technical skills. And in our style of racing, that's definitely something that is that is helpful. So um, it was. It's been a, quite a few years that I've been working on building my confidence with that. So your dad got you into the sport, and he also then delivered you to the training center where that you basically learned the biking end of it. Did, uh, can you tell us about your dad? Yeah, my dad, he was um, he passed away in April really unexpectedly. So this year has been uh, quite hard for us, but he was the one who um, who got me started in the sport. I did my first one with him on Father's Day in 2007. And at that point, I was just doing it, I thought, as something to do with him, ultimately to find out a bit later that he might have had um, some some ideas in his head that I might be good at it. And that was his <laughs> way of introducing me. So um, and then, yeah, he's been he's been so much a part of this journey in triathlon for me from driving me out to the Olympic Training Center when I fully decided to commit to be professional to being at all the races. And so it's just so involved with with everything, cheering, cheering for the highs and being there to pick me up when I needed him. And, and he convinced you not because you didn't want to stay initially. And he said, hey, give it a day, give it a two days. And he, he, did, he did what dads do. And he made sure that you saw it through, right? He did. Yeah. About an hour out from Colorado Springs, I started crying and I said, oh, I'm not sure I want to do this anymore. And he said, Katie, just just give it a shot. And if you don't like it, then I'll just fly out and we drive back together. And that's what he always did. He he wouldn't push, but he would guide me like so that I could make those decisions, but feel comfortable with whatever decision I ultimately made. And, and, and as you mentioned, he passed away unexpectedly. And, and, and like every, any athlete who loses a parent, like any kid who loses a parent, your, your performance suffered. But tell us about the rainbow that you saw in Tokyo, because that had to be the old man smiling down upon you, was it not? Oh, for sure. I mean, he, he passed away, and we knew that he would always be watching over us. And I knew that he would be the, the only spectator allowed in, uh, in Tokyo. But I didn't expect it to be so obvious. And when I was partway through my race, I was on the bike and I just looked over towards actually Rainbow Bridge is what it's called. Um, and I just saw a rainbow reaching across the sky and I just gave a little hi, dad, like in that moment, thinking like he's there, he's watching, he's he's here for me. And I'm just really happy that it was it was so, so blatant. <laughs> um, yeah, so what, a, and what a great I, story. I asked, yeah, I asked a few of the competitors if they had seen it as well. And they're like, no, like, how did you even notice that while we're like in the middle of a rainy bike ride? And <laughs> wow, no, wow. Cool. How cool. Hey, can we drop the banner? Because we have to see the medals. Can you uh, can you share share with us the uh, you have two thirds of the complete set now? Is there is there enough gas in the tank to get the uh, the, the missing member? Well, um. I'm not sure. I won't say won't say no, but I, I'm pretty happy with these ones. <laughs> well, I, I bet you would be. be you are one of the rare, few human beings to ever possess two. I mean, <laughs> I, I just is, is this the end of your international career? Do you think? I'm not sure. I mean, with with Paris only three years away, it's definitely enticing. Yeah, it's why not? not? A full, it's not a full quad, but also. Um, I have a lot of other plans I would like to do, get involved a bit in a little bit longer distance racing, but also our, our main priority for my husband and I is we'd li really like to start a family. So Understood. Um, well, that we have lots of goals. <laughs> yeah, that might slow down training a little bit. Hey, uh, tell us about the mixed triathlon, because I, I had to look what that up, what, what that meant. That that sounds like a real cool event. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. It's my favorite. It's, so it's a mixed relay and there's two women and two men on each team and the women lead them off. You go female, male, female, male. And every one of us does a super short triathlon. So it takes us each about 20 minutes to do. And 
Um, we each do it, tag off to the next person. So it's a 300 meter swim and then a 6K bike and then a 2K run. Super fast. And you have to have your whole squad, your whole team has to be on point on the day. And I'm really proud of what the American team was able to do. What a neat event because it takes what is really an isolated sport where it's just you against yourself and, and the competition and turning it into a team event where if you mess up, you're letting three other people down. So it's, it's a cool idea. Yeah, it's a super different feeling as you're racing for the team rather than just the individual. It has a little bit of an extra pressure because you want to make sure that um, you're you're putting everyone else in a good position, but it's also such an amazing feeling to do it with your with your team, with your country, and um, to just be able to do that together. Well, lastly, your impressions of the I know we call it the 2020 Olympic Games, but in 2021, but what what will be your takeaway memory? Uh, I think just the people, the community, like, I mean, one of my goals from since competing in Rio was to just really take in the experience of the Olympics. And I really felt like I did that. I loved every moment. I loved meeting the athletes, trading pins in the Olympic Village. And um, obviously, I'm very happy with the competitions and my performances there. But um, especially with my dad passing away, I really relied on this community of people from triathlon. And they really helped get me through. So that part was super special to be able to celebrate with them after these races. Well, Katie, thank you for taking time out of your uh, commute to speak with the San Diego audience. A big uh, thank you to our mutual friend, Bob Babbitt, who made this interview possible. And uh, boy, we wish you nothing but good luck and good fortune in the days ahead because now you're part of the KUSI family as well. Uh, thank you so much. All right, Katie. Safe journeys uh, 